What is going on everybody and welcome to a Cyber Python 2077 video. In this video we're going to be tinkering with some computer vision tasks to see if we can achieve um, some AI functionality in Cyberpunk 2077. Um, to start, unlike uh, GTA 5, which by the way I know people are going to get some crazy ideas uh, with what's going on here, I'm just tinkering. Don't don't uh, don't read too far into it, um, but pretty much every game I play now, I think of like, can this be solved with the computer vision <laughs> um, Python? And uh, at least in this game, I think we can actually develop the best AI in Cyberpunk 2077 using some pretty rudimentary computer vision um, techniques. So um, that's what we're going to do. The bar is pretty low. So uh, so first of all. I, at least in this game, unlike GTA, where cars are kind of like a, the main focus of the game. I mean, it's like in the title that you steal cars. Uh, whereas in this game, actually, kind of being on foot is, is the more, is the bigger element in this game. Um, and then, so I kind of thought, hmm, like, could we, is it possible that we could still navigate on foot, like, through a city? Um, and, and if I could do that, or... or if so, like, how, how might we actually just go about, like, doing it? So then I started thinking, okay, well, at least on foot, you can follow that, the, the pathing that the game just gives you. And for the most part, it appears the pathing is pretty good. So if you wanted to navigate on foot in this game with a program, you really just need to follow the minimap. <laughs> so, um... So then it was like, okay, well, how would we... How do we follow the minimap? What would we do from there? So I kind of just want to run through, um what I think is at least a pretty valid methodology for automatically walking around in the game of Cyberpunk 2077. So, the first order of business will be to grab the screen, uh, and then also we need something to do direct input, both in the form of key presses, but also mouse movement on the screen. So you can't use something like Pi Auto GUI to input keys or to move the mouse, because that it's not the right input type basically uh, for the game. It won't recognize what you're doing. So um, so we need those two things. And it turns out with the Python Plays GTA series, we got both of those things. So let me pull up those. I will put links to both in the description. Um, but here we have the grab screen script. And then we have the keys. Now with grab screen, what this forces us into is selecting basically the region that we want to pull from. There are other methods. You can also, there are some methods where you just input the name of the window, right? And it's much less code than, than what this is. Uh, the problem with that is, at least for me, like, I don't know all of, like, all of what's going on here. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing is frame rate. We need the most frame rate as possible. So um, this still seems to be the fastest way of, of getting those frames and reading those frames. So... Um, this is the method that I'm going to use. And then keys, this was written by Daniel, um, just to let us control both the mouse and the keys. So I'm going to grab these two. I will put links to both in the description. So if you want to follow along, you can. Also, if you want to follow along in some other game, you totally can. You don't have to run Cyberpunk 2077 to follow along. Lots of games have mini-maps. Lots of games have pathing on the map. You should be able to use all of the same techniques that we're going to use here with like any game that you want. Um, just hopefully the pathing is, is decent. So at least in this game, the path is on the sidewalk <laughs> if you're on foot, and then if you're on a, in a car, the paths will be on the road. But even if there weren't paths, like for example, like with a car, you could drive a car and you would know where the road is based on the map. Um, oh, I'm not showing the game. So a <laughs> couple of things. First of all, if you hear all my fans going, that's because this game makes the CPU get very hot and fans go brr. And... Um, and then uh, because of this full, like the game and all that stuff, uh, it becomes kind of challenging to show uh, all the windows I want to show. So I kind of have to navigate these windows via OBS, which I'm recording. So sorry if I don't pull up the window quickly or <laughs> forget to pull it up and I'm trying to show you something. It's just going to happen. But anyway, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to follow this yellow path. But yeah, you could, in theory, like if you look at the mini map here, all the roads are marked with this like blue color and that's the same across the game. So Different games are going to have different kind of methodologies for showing paths and things on the minimap, but in general, they tend to be pretty standardized in that specific game. So anyway, what we're going to try to do is follow that yellow path. So the first order of business, we need to see the game. So we grab the screen for the game. 
then we need to see just the minimap. So then we're going to use a region of interest with um, just open CV slice, get just the minimap. Then we want to see the path, right? So then we're going to mask and find that yellow color. And then we'll go from there. We'll try to walk along that path using some sort of technique. Um, I'm sure there's many ways that this could be done. I'm just going to do <laughs> the way I came up with. So, uh, okay, so let's get over to our code here. Let me pull up Sublime. Cool. All right, <clears throat> so this is just some starting code. Basically, it's just going to grab the screen for 100 frames. Again, this is the region. This is going to vary depending on the resolution of the game. Where is the game? Is it running full screen? Do you have many screens? Do you have one big screen? Is it a wide screen? So on. So um, the region that you select from and the resolution is going to vary depending on the game. So just note that. When we pull it, it will be in BGR. We're going to convert to RGB. And then I'm just going to resize it to something a little smaller um, because we're going to display it and there's no need to display the exact same high resolution version. Um, but let's go ahead and just kind of run that, show you uh, what we have so far. Hopefully it pops up. It does. Great. Let me move everything out of the way. And there we have, we can see that, yep, we are indeed pulling it at a decent frame rate. I wouldn't want to play at that frame rate, but... Um, it's at least enough that we, okay, we can work with this, all right? It's not uh, two frames a second. So, okay, now that we have that, uh, let me pull up Sublime. And what is the, oh, I ha did I have it up? Or oh, I had it up already, and then we were looking at the, uh, it's going to continue. It's going to continue. Um, okay, so, um, okay, so we'll just continue working. So the first thing we want to do is grab the minimap. So the first kind of task is to just run through this path. So I'm actually just going to make a new function. We're going to just call it define uh, pathing. It's going to take in um, a map, or let's call it mini map. I don't want to steal the name map from Python. <laughs> uh, it'll take a mini map, and then it's going to just like do stuff. For now, we'll just say pass. So we want to first grab that mini map. So before we do this like resize here, in fact, I'm going to comment, comment, comment out. We want to grab the, the region of interest that we're interested in. Actually, I already have the region of interest that I want to use. So I am going to copy and paste it just because it's silly to waste time. Um, but I'll at least explain it. So <clears throat> the minimap is a slice of the screen. And these are the x values and these are the y values. So it's going to be for x. It's from the 81 to uh, 377. Or actually, hmm, let me think about this. I think it's actually yx. Sorry. <laughs> so, so that only really makes sense because y starts at the t at the top. So it's actually y to your x. So 81 to 377, and then um, for the x coordinates, it's 2181 to 2469. Um, to to figure out what your coordinates are, just trial and error it. Honestly, just pa paste in the ranges. Take your best guess to start, and then hone it in. So at least in this game, uh, let's pull up the mini map. As you can see, the minimap in Cyberpunk 2077 is like not a perfect square, right? It's a little distorted. It's not like a tilted square. It's like, I don't, I don't know what, what to describe it besides distorted. It's not a perfect thing. So anything we do is not going to be probably perfect in this case, but we should be able to still succeed. So um, so that's our minimap. We got the screen and then we're gonna pass that minimap into pathing. So then we're going to say pathing and we'll pass in minimap. Um, and then we have code here. So the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to detect that path. So I'm going to, I think we'll just, I'm going to copy this over and explain uh, what this is. Cause again, your values are going to change if you're using some other game or something like that. I'm just assuming probably most people watching are probably just simply watching out of curiosity. And then some people are going to probably apply it to another game. And then maybe 1% of you are actually following along in cyberpunk. So I think oh, we'll just do it this way. So, so, um, so for masking again, kind of like selecting this, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the way I go about doing it <laughs> is the following. So first of all, when you mask, you're actually first going to convert to HSV. Now, HSV is hue, saturation, value. And if you look up HSV, there are like HSV color pickers. And you might think, ah, we'll just use that to figure out what the right values are. But they don't use the same range. Like OpenCV seems to use the range of 0 to 255, but that's not actually a valid HSV range. So if anybody knows a better way than what I'm about to show you, uh, feel free to comment below. But this is the method I use. So 0 to 255. First order business, like, so let me just, let's just look at it real quick. 
Uh, we don't have numpy. Let's import import numpy as np. Save that. Run it. Um, okay, so as you can see, oh, I'm so actually surprised that window came up. Um, so I'm using open or I'm using OBS to show you like the different windows, and it's actually supposed to be looking for a window called CV2 screen, um, but I saw it pop up, so I'm not really sure how that happened. But anyway, <clears throat> this is what we get. So it's all white. So uh, what this means is actually everything matched, right? Because everything is in the range of 0 to 255 hue, saturation, and value. So hue is your color, saturation is your saturation, value is the value of that color. So, um, uh, so the first order of business is to figure out what is the hue. So, so where in the range is this color? So the first thing I would do is let's just set some large number um, approximately halfway there. I know it's not quite right, like 120... Seven. <laughs> anyway, not important. 127.5? I don't know. Anyway, so run that, and we can see that hmm, in the hue of 150 to 255, it doesn't actually look like our path is detected. So that means, actually, our path is in the range of somewhere... It's not in the range of 150 to 255, so it, therefore it must be in the range of 0 to 150. So then... The next thing that we could do is we can do the exact same thing for saturation. So we can say 150 to 255. We can run that again. And sure enough, what we see is, okay, great. So we filtered out quite a bit. We can still see our character color. Um, and then we can see some, like, some of the road it looked like. And just some uh, general noise. We still want to kind of like filter those out. So again, we'll just do the same thing again. Okay, we do 150. Um, and then we'll run that again. And then, okay, at this point, it, it looks like we've actually filtered out basically everything except for the character on the map. And then we have the path that we want. Well, the character color is like this like blue. Let me pull it up real quick for you. Bloop. So the character color on this map is a blue and the path is a yellow. So we should be able to filter that out like pretty simply. Um, so the again, the next thing I would do is come back to let me pull up my sublime show you sublime <laughs> and then i would just continue adjusting so i would continue bringing in certain values so maybe here I, you know you could make something well first of all it's definitely a hue issue right blue versus yellow so it's not a saturation it's not a value issue it's a hue so probably i would say i don't know 75 to 150 that would be the first next the first next step i would make i don't know anyway let's try that whoops I ran Python instead. I'm not actually sure why. Weird. Okay, so anyway, yeah, boom, done. It filtered out, and now we have just the path uh, that we want to detect. Okay, now that we have that, um, we have to talk about what is the actual logic um, that we intend to use. So pulling up the game. So what we really want to do is we want to follow this path um, and, and, but we need to somehow formulate programming logic that will follow that path for us based visually on what the map looks like. So I think the best, well, there, well, okay, first of all, I mean, we know, like, if our character is looking like this, we know the character needs to look right. And we know this because the character is always, like, the mini map is always forward for character. And we can see the path is off to our right. And then we know this is correct because at least the initial stages of this path are directly in front of us. So on the map, um, that would translate to, so let's just pull that back up again. That would translate to the white pixels basically being directly in front of us. Well, we also can surmise, again, the map is a little, um, um, I can't think of the word now. Anyway, the map is not a perfect square, uh, but we would say, okay, well, probably the target would be to have white pixels in the in perfectly in the middle. Now, the other problem we have is um, we, if in this case, if the white pixels were perfectly in the middle or we tried to make it as perfect or as close to the middle as we could, probably the character would look like this and then probably walk into this pole, right? That's That's no good. We don't want that. We want the character actually to first go this way and then turn. So in order to achieve that, 
Um, I think the best way about it is actually, rather than taking in the entire minimap, we zoom in even further. So the way I went about doing that was I actually just make, made a new value called mini minimap. And again, I just would um, trial and error until I got the, the value that I wanted. Um, but let me, I already have a value that I'd like us to use, possibly, maybe. I thought I had the value, but oh, here we go. <laughs> I was about to have to just do it myself. Um, okay, so let's pull this up. So I would say mini map and then mini mini map. Now I might as well just keep that on hand because that's probably going to come in use later at some point. But now rather than pathing mini map, let's do pathing mini mini map. Save that. Um, it is still on screen. Let's run that real quick. And now it's so small. <laughs> Oh no, I can't get it. Uh, it's like up in the corner. Uh, I want to make that way bigger. <laughs> okay, maybe I've got it that way. So anyway, now we have the mini map. And now it, as we, if we zoom in enough, we get just like the few dots right ahead of us. So I think that's probably better. So as we approach, hopefully I can make it in time. As we approach this turn, like if we centered those, we would probably... Like I'm trying to just walk based on what I'm looking at on the thing. I think that that's like good enough to get around there. Um, so now we'll find out. Oh, now it's gone. <laughs> Where's our path? I like legit lost the path on the uh, on the game for some reason. Anyway, so we'll have to handle for that kind of stuff at a later date. Um, okay, so uh, once we have um, the so we're going to work with those, like the smaller mini map of pixels. Once we have those pixels, we still have to like come up with the logic of, okay, how do we know what center, um, how far off center are we? And then when we are off center, how do we get back on, on center? Um, what do we do? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over uh, after the mask. Yeah, we'll just do that. So we need to find the coordinate location of all of the white pixels in that mask. So anything that matches the mask is gonna be a value of 255. Everything else will be zero. So we wanna find where all the pixels of 255 are. So to do that, we're going to say uh, matches equals np.arg where, and then in here we say where mask equals to, actually probably double equals 255. So that gives us all our matches. So this is going to be an array of matches. So for example, let's print uh, matches. Let me change the frames. We're going to say 100 frames. And then we'll run map walking. So that showed up. And then command window. <laughs> Look at me, hacker man. Okay. <clears throat> so as we can see, it's kind of spamming out these, these locations. But as you can see at the end here, we've got, it's just an array of these coordinate locations for the 255 values. So what do we do with that? Well, what we really want is for these coordinate values, which by the way, these are the co in coordinates y, x. So it's an array, an image is an array, and the first index value is going to be y, and then the second one will be x. And the one that we're interested in is the x, right? Because the further... Um, let's say, uh, you can't see the game. Uh, let me do this and this. Boom. Uh, so in this case, <clears throat> like we want all of those X's to be perfectly in the center. But as it goes this way, right, the X's will be, you know, to the left. So it'll be less than. And then this would be perfectly center. And then these would be like greater than center values. So we want it to be in the perfect center. So first, we want to know what is perfect center, what are the current locations, and then like what is the delta, essentially? And that will inform us which way do we want the mouse to turn. So coming back to sublime text, and I think we probably want, we'll want this window, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of it for now. So now I have to pull up sublime text. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so we want to know, so we've got the matches, we, now we want to know what the average match was. So I'm 
just going to copy what I had before. So it was called mean y. And in this case, it's going to be a numpy.mean of the matches. But we want just the x elements. And to do this with like a 2D array, for example, it's going to be colon, comma, whoops, colon, comma, comma, um, the index that we want to use. So it's going to be colon, comma, one. OK, so. Um, so once we have that, that will be the mean of all of the x values of those matches. So this will tell us what the mean is, and then we just really we just want to know what is our goal value, right? So we're going to say uh, target is that what I yeah call it target equals, and in this case it will be whatever the minimap is dot shape. So the shape of the minimap, and again it's going to be in I think y x yeah y x. So we want to know the first -th element. Divide it by two. That will be our target. <laughs> and um, I can't really decide. I mean, I don't think it's going to be important that we convert that to an int. So like if it's a float value for whatever reason, no big deal. I don't think it'll matter. So we'll just do that. And I don't think, yeah. So then finally, we're going to say our error equals, and we're going to say target minus, whoops, target minus, mean y. So I'm back on like my main computer now and um, na I, my main computer's keyboard is a, a mechanical keyboard now with blue switches and I'm doing you guys a huge solid by not using that on video. <laughs> so I'm like trying to get used to using this keyboard. It's a pain. Um, okay, so um, error target. So rather than print matches, let's print the error. And then hopefully that will be somewhat meaningful and give us values that we want. So um, we are printing out the screen, so I think we'll be good. You can see that um, in our error. Oh, you can't see my command window. Let me pull up the command window. And then finally, let me just, we don't need to see Sublime at the moment. So, okay, so this gives us our error. So as we're like, as we move this way, the error is a negative. So if it's a negative, that tells us we need to move right. And then as we pull down the error, it appears to be working as we want. Let me run it one more time. And then, yeah, so if the error is positive, that means we need to move left. Okay, yeah, so great. So now we are so close to having <laughs> having what we want. So now all we need to do is basically walk and then move the mouse as intended. So before we <laughs> go make that mistake, let me, um, I'm going to import a uh, time. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say for i in range of like three, we're going to just print i and then time dot sleep and we'll sleep for one second. That way I have time to like set everything up because <laughs> this is going to take control of my mouse and my keyboard. And that will be really annoying if I'm not actually set up to exactly what I want to see um, before that event occurs. <laughs> so now, <clears throat> Um, okay, so I'm going to take, yeah, I'll just take this and move this over. So based on that error, what do we want to do? We're going to move the mouse. So I'm just going to paste in keys and then direct mouse. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move negative one times the int of the error because we can't actually, um, we can't move a float number of pixels. So we're going to just move negative one so we're going to flip the sign of exactly whatever the error is. And later, we'll smooth that out. Or if, if there happen to be future videos, we'll smooth that out. Um, but for now, I think that's fine. Um, and in this case, it is x, y. We only want to move the x uh, axes at the moment. So, OK. So at this point, <clears throat> we'll do that. Um, I guess we can do go ahead and just slap in the direct key as well. So once this is done, we're going to do uh, keys dot direct. Is it camel? Key? Yes. Direct key. And then it will be W. And then when we're all done, uh, CV2. Why would I show it? <laughs> so coming back here. Um, so yeah, we have our, our sleep here. Basically, uh, we're going to input the W key just before uh, we start running through the frames and then uh, here um, we're going to release that key and then destroy all windows. If for some reason you are following along and the script breaks or you break the script 
or whatever before the key gets released. It's going to stay depressed, but all you have to do is just hit the W key or whatever key on your keyboard and it will release it. Um, cool. So yeah, getting back to up here, once we've got this uh, defined, we need to go ahead and import keys, import keys as K. And then uh, it's going to, I think it's just key, yeah, keys equals K dot capital keys. Uh, and then just empty, there's no, nothing that we're gonna initialize in there. Save this, and I think that should work. So I think what I'll do is I'll start off like off a little bit and then let's see, let's see how that works. So, run that, zero, one, two, oh, I was totally not ready. <laughs> you can see, at least, it appears, oh, I didn't move quickly enough, did it? No. <clears throat> oh, and we got a, okay, so we got an error. We got a couple of things. That's okay, because you couldn't really see what was going on. I think I need to make that timer a little longer. Um, okay, so we got an error. Okay, a couple of things happened. So let me pull up the console. So this is what we got. It was walking, I assure you. Um, this is the error that we saw. I think it's because we actually ended up walking beyond the path uh, that we intended to take. Um, so there was no path. So we would want to have some sort of handling for that. There's going to be times where who knows what happens. Um, sometimes when you're filtering, uh, even the best mask for some reason, even this map, I want to say is a little bit uh, transparent. Doesn't, yeah, it's a little bit. You can kind of see a little bit through the map. I don't know if I can pull up, uh, let's get rid of Sublime. Like if you look, um, I'll put like a billboard behind it. I don't know if you can see that, but there is, you can kind of see through it. Anyway, that can, that can mess with things. It can change the HSV values a little bit, enough to where you might not pick it up anymore. <laughs> so you'd want to have some sort of handling for that. In general, moving around, or something like that can, can kind of help uh, to pick it back up. But anyway, we're, I'm not going to try to fix that for now. The biggest thing was it, he just didn't move in time. So let me just run that one more time. Um, zero, one, two. Okay, cool. So, I mean, it, this guy's in the way. <laughs> so he's doing okay. He starts to try to turn, and then he misses it. He walks beyond his path. That's why we get that NAN issue. Uh, the script breaks. I just need to press the W key and fix it. So let me get us back to where we want to be. And uh, we'll try that again. So there's a couple of changes that we want to make in that. will take us to Sublime Text. Let me pull up Sublime here. Um, I think I want to make this maybe five seconds for me. And then for the error movement, int error. I don't know, but times three. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and then I think that's probably good enough. Um, we want to have some sort of try and accept for if this thing hits an error, but for now, whatever. Uh, let's run that again. Let me pull up, close sublime, pull up this. And I think that's good enough. Let's run it. <laughs> okay, so I'll start like this too. Let's just see. And also see like that path is not, so okay, that's good enough, I guess. Let's see if he moves quickly enough. <laughs> it's so juddery. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. That appears to work. We could probably run it a little longer. Um, we might might even want to move uh, like a larger error, but that's at least took the turn decently. Again, pretty juddery. We would want to smooth that mouse down. Um, but other than that, I, th I think it actually worked pretty well. Let me, uh, let us change to, let's do like 400 here. I'm gonna save that. And I think that's the only change I really need to make. <clears throat> let me get rid of Sublime Text. Run that again. Cool. Maybe. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I forgot I said it's a five seconds. So even like it overshot that time, but still fixed itself. That's fine. It actually follows that path really well. Let's see if he makes his turn. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. This person is very scared. <laughs> I 
Oh, we just ran out of time. Okay, cool. So that worked well, although I will say I was a little curious what would happen uh, with this tree. Let's let's just run it for 100 frames real quick. <clears throat> I think he's going to run into this tree. I mean, that's what it looks like. So I just changed frames to 100. I don't feel like showing it real quick and then having to get rid of it. It just looks like the pathing is going to go right into that. And it does. <laughs> is he going to make it? Oh, he still made it. Uh, that's so fun. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's okay. Uh, that's pretty good for some pretty basic code. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's a pretty good start to, um, to, to, to using the navigation, especially when all we're doing is looking at the mini map and turning our character based on the map, at least through my playing, um, of a completely reasonable amount of time of this game. I, I believe the pathing is actually pretty good. Like it, it will usually map you around even objects like this. Uh, for some reason I was kind of surprised it didn't do that, but okay. Um, but the next order of business would be like, for example, if you run in, wow, I thought I would run into this guy. I don't know. Sometimes you like go through people and then sometimes you run into people. Like what? I just like totally went through that guy. <laughs> Let's maybe if they're standing still. Let's see. Yeah. So like sometimes you just like run, oh, I'm, tr I'm trying to do a demo here. I don't know. I, I, I can't quite figure that out. I'm pretty sure you run into people, but, um, and then he gets kind of stuck. Anyway, I assure you it happens sometimes. <laughs> but so, so having some sort of object detection on screen would probably help, um, to, to avoid people. So in general, like if you saw there were people here, you could just sidestep a little bit and then you would get back on the path. Cause even as you sidestep, you just saw like the thing, will, it should update at some, yeah, there we go. It updates. So you could sidestep a little bit, wait a few seconds, and then it would update and then you would have your new path. So you could probably get around it doing that. And I, I think you would be able to probably navigate with a really high percentage, you know, like 70 or 95% of the time. I think that's enough to, to do everything on foot that you would need to do on this game. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I think the only major downside is like if there, if you happen to be in an area that doesn't have a sidewalk, it does put the path for you to walk like literally in the middle of the street. That's kind of a problem. <laughs> so, so yeah, but there's really nowhere else for you to walk. So I don't know. I'm not really sure. Um, okay. I think that's a good stopping point. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any ideas uh, or requests for like something that we could do in this game, um, yeah, feel free to let me know. Uh, if you have ideas for like how we could make it even better, you could let me know that as well. I definitely am going to try to apply um, object detection onto here. I'm curious how well it picks up things. I, I suspect we'll be able to pick up cars and people uh, quite well with object detection, like just the basic TensorFlow object detection. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see how well that works. Um, also interested to see how much we can stack on top of our GPU uh, <laughs> without um, completely dying. So, uh, okay. So maybe some interesting things to look forward to, uh, in the future. I'll probably just continue tinkering on here. Um, questions, comments, concerns, whatever. Feel free to leave them below. Otherwise I will see you guys in another video.